Hello and welcome to Avoiding Big Brother. We're looking at another malware sample today. We're looking at LokiBot or Loki. This is another information stealer. It's been around since 2015. It's been developed in a nation around Russia or in Russia itself. And a lot of cyber criminals are starting to use this. Even though it's been around for quite a long time, it's still very popular. So we're on the AnyRun website, we're going to have a look at this, uh, the report. As you can see here, this was recorded on the 12th of May, and we can see lots of samples that were uploaded on the 12th of May 2022. So you can see how popular it is. So it's an information stealer, collects credentials, and this one runs quite deep into the system because it's not just about web browsers and stealing cookies, we've got FTP, email clients, and it can steal from hundreds of software applications that may be installed on a system. So this can get a lot of information from a victim. This was created by a hacker known as Loki Stuff or known as Carter. And he, he was initially sending it to $400 to other criminals. But the malware seems to be now available somewhere around $80. So pretty cheap, which is probably another factor of why it's so popular now. Criminals don't need in-depth coding skills now. They can just buy the malware from another developer. All they need is the social engineering skills. They've got to try and trick the victim into clicking a link or downloading a file. That's the things that a lot of these criminals work on. So we've got the IOCs and domains connected with the malware uh, and I would assume these are connected for the uh, command and control server to control the malware. Although I think it's mostly uh, automated. So again, the, the criminal doesn't need a lot of skills. It actually does a lot of the work for them. So it, we can see, also see here that uh, it uses encryption. And that's to avoid detection, so it can bypass security software. So each layer is obfuscating that source code. It makes it difficult for security researchers to understand what's happening and uh, actually look at the code. And to trick victims, it's also using a technique of blurring images in documents and it forces the user to enable the macro. So a lot of this, this is a macro attack. So with the phishing, it's, it's trying to trick that victim into clicking the macro, which will then execute a file, which is the payload. And then it uh, drops the malware on, whether that be a keylogger or whatever it is that exfiltrates data. So here we, it's, it's through Microsoft Office files. It'll probably like something like MS Excel and be disguised as an invoice. Person opens it up, there'll be a macro and they'll click that link. And then it, here it says it uh, unpacks a keylogger. So uh, that will probably be used to record data that's been entered into web browsers, but it looks like it uses like an application to exfiltrate data from files as well. That gets a lot of the information from all the software that's being used on the system. And as you can see, lots of modifications and changes being made in the registry. So it's using an encryption technique for the keylogger as well. And all the commands are coming from a control, command and control server, like a lot of these malware attacks happen. So it requires macros to infect the system. The victim's got to click on a link for it to, to work. And uh, they're saying the best way to avoid infection, which some organizations do this. They have like a no macros policy. You can't use any macro in a Microsoft Office document, but some do. And that's where it needs to go through some kind of security auditing. You now there'll be a security IT team that will check the document to make sure that the macro is not malicious. So it's distributed through spamming, which a lot of these criminals try and do. They spam out to lots of organizations, e you know, emails with the malicious file attached. So they'll come up with some convincing message in the email, hoping that someone will open that file and then click on the macro. 
So looking at the execution process, it's uh, an executable file. It's exploiting a vulnerability in Windows, I think, CVE 2017. There's a vulnerability there that it's exploiting. And it's Microsoft Office that uh, starts the execution. And the data is all connected with the command and control server, so the data gets sent back there. It's saying it actually runs itself, so like I say, the, the criminal doesn't actually need to do much, it's all done itself. So it's just showing you about the file executions. Again, this is a bit too technical for my understanding. And it's telling me the strings. This is the sort of known coding. This is what can help security organizations detect which uh, malware it is, identify it. Interestingly, it's saying there's lots of videos being published on YouTube. So people are actually teaching others how to use it. I can't imagine those videos are staying on YouTube for that long. So that's the report from AnyRun. Uh, let's move on to looking at a sample now in the report. Just get a, an idea of how this uh, malware works, and what it does to your system. So it says here it does attack Windows systems. It's Windows executable. We've got shared modules for execution. So similar to another one, uh, another information stealer I analyzed. It's modifying DLL files, things that are at the low level of the system. Lots of obfuscation going on, encryption. And, and it's stealing credentials from various sources. Looks like a lot of this is browsers, but also we've got the files as well. So it's going through all the, the files on the system, looking for where it can exfiltrate interesting data, uh, credentials from files. So this has quite a lot of quite capabilities. And then obviously we've got the communications going through there. So we've got obfuscation going on. <clears throat> It's obfuscating the files, making it very difficult for security to detect what's going on. It's even removing some of those indicators as well. So it's basically disabling the computer from being able to protect itself. So from that point, it can then steal credentials. And it's same from web browsers as well. So, I mean, Google now offer um, password storage. So this malware will probably steal your passwords from that. So techniques that's being used native API, again, like the shared modules, it's targeting the low level part of the system right at the kernel stage. It's on the, the booting of the system. It's changing those processes. It injects code into those processes. And that code is basically making the machine work against itself and support the malware so that it functions. And then from that point, it's stealing credentials. And then it's also uh, discovering the system information. So that will probably be reported back to the command and control server as well, which may be useful for the attacker. So all of it, these info stealers, is sort of change things right at the low level of the computer, right on startup. It just changes the function of the computer. So it's almost working against itself. We don't have any screenshots of what happens, but I would imagine it would be like a Word document, Microsoft Excel, and then you'd see a picture of uh, a macro prompt where they would click. And as you can see, there's lots of changes going on in the registry, rewriting of files, deletion of files. So again, it's operating at the very low level of the computer and how it works. Okay, that's a look at the sample of LokiBot. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.